Iraq is a country located in the Middle East, surrounded by Iran, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and Kuwait, with a population just over 39 million. The area that is now Iraq was once part of ancient Mesopotamia, the land of the indigenous Assyrian people. Majority of Iraq is Muslim, with only approximately 1% being Christian or Assyrian. Iraq spends 5.5% of its gross domestic product on health care and has an infant mortality rate of 37.5 deaths per 1,000 live births. This puts them at 48th in the world. The Assyrians are one of the indigenous groups of North Iraq. They are ethnically distinct from the Arabs and the Jews. The majority of Assyrians live in their ancestral homeland, which is now part of Iraq, Iran, Syria, and Turkey. Wars, displacement, and migration are an integral part of the Assyrian history in the late 19th and early 20th centuries and to this day. The collapse of Saddam Hussein's regime in 2003 caused an increase in political instability. Therefore, many Assyrians had to flee their homes and seek refuge in North Iraq or neighboring countries. Homes owned by Christians were painted with the Arabic letter abbreviating the term Nasara, which is Christian, and their homes were declared as belonging to the Islamic State. Church officials claim that more than six Assyrian Christian families leave Iraq every day. My name is Christina Thomas and I'm a Chaldean, which is a branch off of the Assyrian culture. Describe the values of your Chaldean culture. The Chaldean culture is an old culture. It's a very Christian religion. We try to visit family as much as we possibly can. We attend church regularly. We attend the events of the church, ceremonies and weddings. There are many gatherings that we go to. We also try to marry the ones in our community. What were your reasons for leaving Iraq? The reason I left Iraq is because of the war. My brother was a war prisoner. I finished my grade 11 and left the country because if I finished grade 12, I was supposed to go to war. As a Christian, we are persecuted from the government. We have no right to vote. They treat us as the inferior and the second class citizens as they are 97% of Muslims who live in Iraq. There are only 3% of Christians. Now there are less than 1% of Christians who live in Iraq. How are Chaldeans treated in Iraq today? What are their lives like? There is no difference between now and the old regime of Saddam Hussein. A lot of Christians lost their houses, as there were many Muslims who took over them. They tried to convert the Christians to Muslims. If they did not convert, they were threatened to leave everything behind and leave their country. How have the Chaldeans shown resiliency? The only resiliency there is, is when there is peace in the country. I left 37 years ago, and as far as I can remember, there is never going to be peace in the Middle East, as there is always a civil war or war with other countries going on. There is only peace and recovery when they leave the country and are immigrated somewhere else. One of the major health issues impacting the Assyrians we are focusing on is mental health. Mental health issues continue to be an ongoing challenge for the Assyrians in Iraq. These con concerns are due to experiences around violent deaths and injuries, sexual violence, war, physical abuse, psychological trauma, and internal displacement. When my parents moved to Saskatoon, they kind of like never wanted to go back to Iraq just because they were traumatized by the situation and the war going on. Culture can strongly influence the understanding and acceptance of mental illness, which Assyrians within Iraq often do not seek mental health resources despite the trauma they experience. The cultural stigmatization, lack of access to mental health services, and lack of outreach and education about mental health issues are all barriers to accessing resources. Having mental health services available to Assyrians who have left Iraq and working to eliminate the stigma of seeking mental health support are changes that must be made. According to the CDC, 89.5% of inter interviewed Iraqi refugees, including the Assyrians, reported depression, 81.6% anxiety, and 67.6% PTSD. Experiencing discrimination is strongly linked to high levels of anxiety and depression, which negatively affects post-traumatic stress disorders. Mental health disorders are the leading cause of all non-fatal burden of disease in Iraq. Many researchers suggest that there must be more proper education of mental health practitioners to keep up with the demand. 
The interpreted meaning of the term etic is understood as an outside perspective. After researching the Assyrians, we gained a more clear outside or etic perspective as to why the Assyrian people of Iraq are experiencing mental health challenges. We believe the cause of this disparity is due to the cultural persecution and displacement from decades of civil unrest. In comparison to the novel The Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down, Leah Lee's parents experienced similar mental health issues, such as depression, due to their exposure of war in their homeland. Both cultures have felt strong emotions of grief and loss for their family, culture, and country, especially following refugee experiences and losses. Resiliency theory is a strength-based approach that allows us to look at the positive attributes of a culture despite the hardships they have faced. Christina's father expressed that there is very little resiliency while there is war in Iraq. Christina believes differently and shared with us how she felt her culture has remained resilient despite persecution and mental health disparities. I think their family, just like being here and like having the support of like everybody around them was like was helpful to the situation so it helped them like get over it. May the future bring peace and reconciliation so that the Assyrian people may prosper and feel as they belong in their own homeland. Christina's father shared this final point. Canada as a whole country in general has a great health care system. It is the best country and we're very proud to be a part of it. It has provided us with many things such as family, school, freedom and health care.